And now we're going to combine that with a teaspoon, a teaspoon of iodine. <laughs> kinetics the speed at which reactions happen that's what we're playing with today here on t -Core. and we're playing with iodine clocks I am excited about this experiment because it's not something I've done before and I think it's going to be really unique so we're gonna try two different versions along with a couple mini experiments we're gonna do one that comes from a science kit and we're gonna do one that you can do at home from stuff that's underneath your sink or in your kitchen cabinets before we get into these experiments we need to talk about what's happening in this iodine clock reaction it's really Really unique. These clock reactions usually involve a series of different chemicals and basically we're going to mix them back and forth and as these chemicals mix, once a chemical is completely used up, it turns a color. So this all has to do with reaction times and how the process is happening. So to make this happen, we're going to be using for our at-home version some hydrogen peroxide, vitamin C tablets, some pearl starch, any kind of starch really. Then you're going to use some of this iodine and a set of plastic cups. So to run this iodine clock experiment and to test out the time the reactions are happening, we're going to do a series of three experiments. So we're going to do the experiment where we're gonna have 1,000 milligrams and we're gonna crush it up and we're gonna put it in two ounces of water solution. Then we're going to take 500, which is lower, so I believe the reaction should happen faster. And then we're going to try 2,000. And we're gonna test all those times and see how we can get the best reaction out of our homemade ingredients. All right, so now that we have our vitamin C in our different cups, we have to put cups in front of those. And now we are going to make our solution A. So we're gonna take one teaspoon of vitamin C. And now we're gonna combine that with a teaspoon of iodine. Oh, that's really cool. So this is colored, and when it goes into the 1000, the iodine is completely absorbed by the vitamin C. But in the 500 milligrams, it's not. Ooh, the 2000 completely absorbs it. Look at it. That's awesome. So our 500 is not clear. Our 1000 is, and our 2000 is. So now we are going to add two more ounces of water, and we're gonna label that solution A. Still colorless. And then here's our 2000, still colorless. Now remember, the 1000 is our control in this experiment. So that is what we are basing all of our um, conclusions off of, which is why we have one that is colorless as well and one that is colored. For solution A, we have one teaspoon of vitamin C, one teaspoon of iodine, and then we have two ounces of water. And that's what makes up our solution A. So this one has 2,000 of the vitamin C, this has 1,000 of the vitamin C, and this has 500 milligrams of the vitamin C. So for our solution B, you're going to use two ounces of water, three tablespoons of hydrogen peroxide, and half a tablespoon of liquid starch. We're gonna make that three different times in our disposable cups. And now we're going to make some liquid starch. And now we're going to very gently stir. Now we're gonna add half a teaspoon of liquidy starch water. Sweet! All right, there you have it. Three solution Bs. Okay, before we do these reactions over here and test out our results, I wanted to test something that hasn't been done before. A potato is a whole starch. And so I was really curious if we could take a potato and make the iodine clock reaction happen on a potato. So we don't even need solution B, we're just going to use solution A. Actually, I take that back. There's one thing we need from solution B and that's the hydrogen peroxide. And it's gonna play a critical part in this reaction later. So let's go ahead and get our potato chopped up. And if you like potatoes as much as I do, we talked about a potato on uh, the podcast, so you can watch it on Two Core. Doug the potato, sweet. Okay, so we have three slices of our potato here. We're going to test one that's going to have solution A on it, just solution A. So we're gonna combine solution A with our starch that is the potato. Okay, before we add the solution A onto our potato, I'm gonna go ahead and chop it up so we can release some of those starch juices and water. I'm gonna go ahead and add the rest of the solution A to this potato. And it looks clear because it has 1,000 milligrams on it. Okay, so there's our potato. Nothing over here is happening, and it shouldn't happen because there's nothing to separate the bond between the vitamin C and the iodine. So over here, we just have starch and iodine combining together. 
If I take the iodine and I drop it on this piece of paper towel, you get this orange color. Now if I take iodine and I combine it with a starch, you get this really cool black color, almost instantaneously. And it does not happen over here on the paper towel. Now, to make this reaction happen, something has to separate the bond here between the vitamin C and the iodine. So to make that happen, we have to use hydrogen peroxide. What this hydrogen peroxide is going to do is it's going to combine with the vitamin C, stripping the iodine away from the vitamin C, and then that vitamin C is then going to react with the starch. So this reaction does take time. So we're gonna take it, we're gonna put it on this paper towel, and that's what makes this reaction so special is that it is a iodine clock. It does not happen instantaneously. It has to be assisted to a certain degree. All right, so let's use some hydrogen peroxide here. So we see the hydrogen peroxide reacting. It's turning white in our cracks, which means it is reacting with the vitamin C, which is really promising and good. And now we start to see some black. And in those cracks is where the iodine is basically reacting with the starch in the potato itself. And this makes science so cool and exciting because I did it. This is so cool. So now we can see that because we introduced the hydrogen peroxide, it basically takes this reaction and destroys it and tears it apart. And that's how you get the color. And if I introduce more starch by stabbing the potato, the reaction just continues to escalate. And so I'm gonna scrape this away. And you're left with a starch that's reacted with iodine and given us this really awesome color change. So now that we've done that and we've tested out our theory here, um, let's go ahead and see how our reactions are going to do with the 500, our control, the 1000, and our solution A, the 2000. So you're gonna take solution A and you're going to pour it into B and then you're gonna pour it back and forth. Ready? is just really slow. And each time you pour it, it gets darker and darker. Okay, so our iodine clock solution took way longer. Look, it keeps getting darker and darker and darker as the reaction time goes on. So our reaction took way longer. This took like three minutes. Um, which I don't know if it's because they were sitting out or whatnot, but that took a while. So let's go ahead and try the 500 milligram one. Um, I think this one will be much faster because you can already see that the iodine is here. I think as soon as we pour this one, it'll react. There it is. There was no clock because there was not enough um, vitamin C to hold on to all of the iodine ions. So basically, as soon as it hit this, it reacted because there were free iodine molecules that were able to grab the starches that were in here. So that's pretty cool. Okay, let's try this one. This one I feel like is gonna take a minute. And the one thing that I found, so when I was doing solution A, I poured in extra hydrogen peroxide to speed up the reaction because I was pouring it, I didn't have enough. Um, so what's really cool is that you can add more hydrogen peroxide and the reaction will happen faster or the less hydrogen peroxide you have, the reaction will happen slower. So this one is going to take forever because it has the most vitamin C in it. It has 2,000 milligrams, and I did not up the hydrogen peroxide amount. So this reac reaction might not ever happen. So to make it happen, we're gonna add in even more hydrogen peroxide just to help it out and get it going. So we have slowed the reaction time down significantly in this one by not having enough hydrogen peroxide to um, strip away and having way too much vitamin C. What I really like about the potato demonstration is it's a, oh, did you see it happen in my hand? <laughs> it's so cool that it just instantly changes the color. Like it literally just goes like blue all of a sudden and then slowly turns its darker shade. Um, but what I love about the potato reaction is that it's something that you can have in your house and all you need is a potato 
and some iodine and some hydrogen peroxide and vitamin C. So you don't even have to have the liquid starch if you don't have it because I mean, we all got potatoes laying around, right? <laughs> There it is. This one took way longer and had to have some help from the extra hydrogen peroxide, but there it is. So yeah, the 1000 gives you the best amount of time. The 500 reacts way too quickly, like we talked about before, because the iodine is present with the starch, and so it reacts instantaneously because you don't have the vitamin C and hydrogen peroxide reaction to happen first. And then with the 1000, it also happened a little slower. I would have added maybe a little bit more hydrogen peroxide just to assist in the speeding up of the reaction. This was great and our potatoes worked really well. So I am super stoked. Oh, it's white now. <laughs> okay, so I poured in 3,500 milligrams of vitamin C and if I pour it in, it reverses it. So then if I take the hydrogen peroxide, can I like redo it? That should be how it works, right? We'll give this guy a minute to do its thing. Okay, let's try this one, see if we can reverse it. Gone, reversed. It's like our iodine clock experiments never happened. Okay, so our kit is all unpacked and it is from Carolina. Dot com. We're just gonna do one experiment out of this book. There's like four or five different iodine clock experiments that you can do. This book has really cool catalysts in it and we're gonna experiment with one of them, but it is copper sulfate. So this guy is gonna be critical in our reaction time. All right, so we're gonna use 10 milliliters of Ki. Now we're adding sodium thisulfate, we're adding 10 milliliters of this. So this is an actual, real iodine clock reaction that we are putting together currently. So we have sodium thiosulfate and we have potassium iodine currently in these two containers. All right, now we're going to add three milliliters of HCl, so that is hydrochloric acid, three milliliters. And then we're going to add in our starch. So we're gonna use five milliliters. And now in these two cups, we're going to put hydrogen peroxide. And now for one of them, we're going to add two milliliters of this copper sulfate. So we're gonna add it to our B cup right here. All right, we're gonna swirl these. Now we're going to pour them into here. And now we're gonna see which one reacts faster. Remember, this one has our catalyst, this one does not. There it is. Look at that beautiful blue color. Instead of that green color that we were getting, that looks awesome. And all that catalyst did was increase the activation energy of our reaction to give us this really deep, beautiful blue color. I love it. Look how blue and deep that is. Oh, that's just like magic, man. It just like, you see it go and it goes and then it turns. Um, so this one over here took about 14 seconds, this one over here took about 23. And so it's really, really cool because at the end you still get the same reaction, you still get the same components, you still get the same color. So the copper sulfate just really helped boost this reaction. And you know, there's a bunch of other really cool reactions that you can do in this book. But I must say, I appreciate that home version. I think that home version is fantastic and it's a great way to get your hands on things that you can do at home. But in a laboratory setting, there's nothing better than a true set of equations and reactions and chemicals that really break down to give you the true components of an equation. Guys, if there's anything else you guys wanna see us do with iodine clocks or any other science experiments on the channel, let us know in the comments below or check out one of these other videos that's on the side over here. We'll see you guys in the next one.